Hey guys, this is Oscar doing another weekend project. Uh, today I'm going to show you something easy, simple, and fixable. I'm going to change the inner and outer tie rods on this bad boy. This is a 2007 JF Silverado. Um, it is always recommended to do both inner and outer tie rods on the same side, left and right. Today, I re today I'm going to show you how to do it on the driver's side. I already did the passenger side, so. Hopefully uh, this could uh, help you guys out. Enjoy guys. Okay guys, so we're going to go ahead and get started. The first thing you want to do is jack up your truck. Make sure you use precaution. Use a jack stand. Uh, and also I'm using my floor jack as a backup in case my jack stand fails. But the first thing you want to do is put the vehicle. Lift it up. And this is the reason why we're switching out the tie rods. Kind of let me give you an idea. If you put your hand on the 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock, you see that play? I don't know if you can also hear the little noise there, but that's the reason why we're going to change the inner and outer tie rods. So once we're done, you should not have this play at all. Okay guys? So let's go and get started. We're going to go and remove the tire and go from there. Alright guys, so let's go ahead and uh, remove the tire real quick. Alright guys, this is the uh, outer tie rod that we're going to go ahead and uh, change and then this is the uh, inner tie rod that we're going to go ahead and change as well. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and remove this nut on the outer tie rod. But before we even remove that, this is a, this is a uh, lock nut that's actually holding the outer tie rod in place so that way it doesn't move. So we're going to go and remove this one first uh, and then we're going to go ahead and do this one uh, second. So let's go ahead and remove that real quick. Alright guys, so let's go ahead and remove this uh, lock nut that's holding the outer tie rod in place. This is a 24 millimeter um, nut. You have two options. You can use a 24 millimeter wrench to loosen this up. All we want to do is just want to back this nut off or if you don't have a 12 millimeter wrench you can use a crescent wrench uh, an adjustable I'm sorry an adjustable wrench here so you can knock that loose but since I have a 24 millimeter wrench I'm just gonna go ahead and back this up let me show you how just tap it like so and then this is gonna go ahead and move freely just back it up a couple turns all right so the next step we're going to go ahead and uh, take the outer tie rod nut out and I believe this is a let me tell you right now okay guys so I figured out that this is a 1316 socket that I'm going to go ahead and uh, use to remove the uh, outer tie rod uh, nut so I'm going to do that real quick All right. Uh, not got stuck. Are you? If it does get stuck, just use a, a flathead screwdriver to uh, knock this uh, bad boy out. So the next step, we're going to go ahead and uh, remove the outer tie rod. Now there's two ways of going about doing this. You could actually uh, bust out the door hammer and pound it here on the steering knuckle. Or if you have a puller, 
you could also uh, use a puller to uh, pull this out but what I'm going to do I'm going to use a Thor hammer today uh, just because I'm pressed for time I'm just going to bang it and this should come loose alright I'm going to do that real quick saw that so that's basically what you need to do to take this out and I don't know if you can see this but you see how loose and wobbly the inner tie rod this has a lot of play so it should it should not even bounce like that it should be stiff so that's the reason why we're going to go ahead and uh, switch out both the outer and inner tie rod and if you can look at this uh, outer tie rod how it just wobbles it's very loose so that's the reason why you have all that play on your steering now here's a trick guys uh, so that again whenever you do any type of suspension work you would need an alignment but I'm gonna show you a trick we're gonna try to get this uh, as close to alignment as possible all you're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and count the, tur the turns on the outer tie rod and that's gonna determine uh, how I'm gonna put it back okay so let's go ahead and count the turns real quick Let me get you an idea so I took it out like this so we're going to go ahead and count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21 so it's gonna be 21 and a half so I'm gonna start here and then I'm gonna go ahead and do half and then 20 uh, 21 okay so again here half half and then 21 turns so 21 and a half um, we're gonna go ahead and put the outer tie rod all right okay guys so next step we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the boot on the inner tie rod you're gonna have like a little clip let me kind of give you a better angle here so all you're gonna do is just take this little clip push it against the and just remove it like so and the boot should easily move alright and now the way we're going to go to remove the inner tie rod um, we're also, we're also going to remove the boot let me get you a better picture alright so all we're going to do we're going to cut the actual um, there's a metal clip here I don't know if you can see that I'm gonna go ahead and use a, a flathead screwdriver so I can pry this out and then cut it let me show you that uh, let me get you some, some lighting okay guys so now we're gonna go ahead and uh, remove the boot so the boot is clamped in with a metal retainer I'm using a flathead screwdriver and I don't know if you could see there is a uh, small clip now I'm gonna insert my screwdriver I'm gonna try to pry that out once I pry it I'm gonna go ahead and cut it so let me go I don't know if you can see that but basically prying that metal clip out go all right let me get you guys a better angle on this side this is a metal clip that I'm talking about that we're gonna go ahead and 
remove. We're gonna cut it. I just want to pry it out so I can show you guys. All right. So now that I removed it, I'm gonna go ahead and use some uh, diagonal cutters. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. Like so. Just take your time guys, don't lose patience. Try not to damage the boot itself. Okay guys, so I managed to uh, cut that uh, metal clip there with my diagonal tools. And now I'm just going to take this metal clip and that should allow me to freely pull this boot out like so. And there it's going to expose the actual um, inner tie rod. Okay. So let's go to the next step and remove this boot away from there. Okay guys, so in order for us to remove that boot, I'm going to go ahead and take out this nut all the way. And also the uh, clamp that's going to that's going to hold the boot on the outer side. And all I'm doing, I'm just pushing this outwards like this. Pull that outwards. And there you go. That's how you take out the boot. And as you can see, this is the actual uh, outer tie rod. And again, See how wobbly it is we're gonna go ahead and replace it with a new one okay so let's go and do that okay guys so there's a couple ways you can remove the uh, inner tie rod uh, the first one if you have access to a inner tie rod uh, tool remover uh, you can use that basically the way this works you just slide the inner tie rod and you put this tool in there and then you have a wrench uh, that you could go ahead and uh, loosen it out. You can use that method. In case you don't have an inner tie rod tool like this, uh, for this specific vehicle, you could use a 40 inch, I'm sorry, a 40 millimeter uh, wrench. And the way it works is, let me go to show you here. Uh, if you go, if you decide to do. If you're able to get yourself a 40 millimeter wrench to take out the uh, inner tie rod, you can actually just slide this bad boy in there. And this uh, outer uh, inner tie rod has some uh, grooves here where if I slide this 40 uh, millimeter wrench, as so you can see the leverage, I could go ahead and loosen it. In case you don't have a 40 millimeter wrench, and a inner tie rod tool remover. Your last resort would be a um, 18 inch adjustable wrench. And the way it will work, you just slide this bad boy in here and then you go ahead and uh, loosen the uh, inner tie rod. All right, so either method that you choose, just make sure that uh, you use uh, precaution when you do that, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, remove the inner tie rod. Okay guys, so I'm going to show you how to remove uh, the inner tie rod with a 40 millimeter uh, wrench. See that? It turned this and now I'm able to remove this by hand.
gonna twist this bad boy out like so voila so on the new uh, inner tie rod I'm gonna put some blue Loctite and then I'm gonna go ahead and thread it in okay so let's go and do that real quick alright guys so when I was whenever you change any parts you want to go ahead and make sure you compare them with uh, the new part this is the part number for the inner tie rod for this uh, Silverado so let's go ahead and make sure you want to make sure it's the same length to the original one alright so a couple things you're going to check okay and you want to put them side by side just to make sure they're in proper see this is a what I was talking about see how stiff this is I move this and this doesn't move whereas the old one look at that it's a new one I push in it's stiff as a rock so that's where this just wobbles that's you don't want to have that much play on your vehicle on your uh, inner tie rod so everything looks good everything matches up the threads and also the length so now that we know that we're good to go I'm gonna go ahead and remove this uh, nut because I remember we got to put that uh, boot on uh, first and then the little clamp and so forth so that's the inner tie rod and this is the outer tie rod again we're gonna go and replace this and this is the part number for the outer tie rod for this Silverado and we'll do the same thing we're going to compare them make sure they're the same length which they are but I noticed that uh, this is longer so hopefully that shouldn't be a problem we'll know when we get there guys when we get there so let me go ahead this is a, a good opportunity also to install the um, actual we're gonna go ahead and put this in here the fitting so we're gonna go ahead and I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this in and then we're gonna go ahead and install the inner tie rod and the outer tie rod okay guys okay guys so I'm about to install the inner tie rod this is a new one you always want to go ahead and put some uh, blue Loctite on the threads just a small little dab so that way um, this doesn't turn or try to get loose all right and then we're gonna go ahead and start turning it in like so And this should go in easily. Be careful not to uh, shove it in there too hard. There we go. See that? It should just turn in. It should tr just turn by itself. You shouldn't put a lot of uh, effort. You want to go ahead and make sure you torque this to your factory specs on your vehicle. So now that I hand tighten it, I'm going to go ahead and torque it to and tighten this to factory specs. Okay guys, now that you've torqued this to, fact, to your factory specs of your uh, truck, we're going to go ahead and install the boot. And this is going to protect the actual um, inner tie rod from any contamination that uh, might get. But before I install the boot, I'm going to use a big long uh, zip tie and I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, start it on the actual um, boot itself because when I get uh, 
when I when I insert this boot, I'll make sure that it gets uh, the proper uh, the proper fitting. So all I'm doing, and this zip tie fits perfectly on the actual uh, ridges of the boot. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and start this. I'm not going to tighten it yet. I'm just going to uh, kind of pinpoint it. And then I'm going to go ahead and slide the boot like so. Let me get you guys. Okay, guys, I'm gonna get you a better angle of what I'm doing here. So, all I'm doing, I'm just making sure I slide the dust boot on the inner tie rod. And I'm gonna go ahead and push it in like so. And then I'm gonna use the tie rod, I mean, this uh, lock uh, zip tie. I'm gonna go ahead put it in place like so and then I'm gonna go ahead and tighten the zip tight really good just make sure you pull on it and see how I'm pulling on it back it's not moving so that's what you want to have and then you want to go ahead and get a Diagonal those pliers and pull and just cut the loose ends like so. And that's going to go ahead and protect your inner tie rod from any contamination that, uh, you know, from dust or debris. Okay, so let's go and move on to the next step. So, the next step, I'm going to go ahead and insert the retainer on the boot and this one we're going to go ahead and put it in place let me get my pliers real quick just take your time when you're doing this don't, don't lose patience guys So let me go ahead and install this uh, clamp here, and then we'll proceed to the next step, okay? Okay guys, so I went and go ahead and used my pliers to put the uh, metal clamp in there, so that's going to hold the actual boot in place. Now we're going to go ahead and put the lock nut that's going to tie in the actual um, outer tie rod. Put that all the way inside. Okay. Okay. So see the difference from the old tie rod. This would just wobble. And here, look. Look how stiff this is. It stays in place. That's what you want to do. Okay. So next, let's go install the inner tie rod. Okay, guys. So the next step, we're gonna go install the outer tie rod. So do you guys remember that before you took it out, we counted the turns. So we're going to go ahead and do the reverse when it's on the new tie rod uh, end. So I believe it was 21 and a half. So I'm going to start like this. This is uh, going to be uh, where I started uh, where the old one came up, facing up. So it's going to be half a turn. So we're going to go ahead and count 20, 21 turns now. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. All right. And again, you will need an alignment, but this is kind of get you close to where you could drive it to an alignment shop and get this professionally aligned. Um, once we have this in place, our lock nut, we're just going to go ahead and tighten it a little bit. But before we actually tighten it, we're going to go ahead and put the uh, tie rod in. And don't forget the grease feeding. This is a good time to install it and put some uh, uh, grease on it, okay? So, I'm just going to go ahead and turn this bad boy here. And this should go in like so. See that? And then I'm uh, once we have this in place, I'm gonna go ahead and put the nut on this. There we go. I'm going to start. It comes with the castle nut. It also comes with a uh, pin. So we're gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and just pan tighten this, like so. And then you want to go ahead and torque it to factory specs. Once I uh, tighten this up to factory specs, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this lo uh, lock nut in place. And again, you can use some adjustable wrench, an adjustable wrench to get this tied up, or you can use uh, a wrench of the size to tighten it up. So I'm just going to go ahead and tighten it up with the wrench. All right. Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and torque this to 44 uh, foot pounds. Just going to do that real quick. You hear that? That should be it. But also, don't forget, we got to put this pin. Let me give you a better angle, real quick. Okay guys, so we got this torqued already to 44, 44 foot pounds. You see that little hole? That's where the pin goes. But as you can see, it's a little bit a little bit off. So even though it's already at 44 foot pounds, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, continue turning it until that little hole, it's uh, between this, this uh, opening here. Remember, Never go, uh, never go back. Always go forward. Okay, we can tighten it. Okay, guys. So again, I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten this until that hole lines up. Okay, I think, I think we got it. Yes, there we go. So now that we have that, I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure this gets uh. From the other side, I'm going to go ahead and fold these ends inwards so that way uh, if this nut does ever come uh, loose, it won't come out because this is going to go ahead and stop it. Just wanna, I just want to go ahead and uh, show you the extra step, guys. Okay, guys, this would be the perfect time to go ahead and grease the outer tie rod before you install the tire. So let's go ahead and uh, grease that bad boy here. Alright, that should be good.
Okay guys, so now I've installed the uh, rim and tire back and this is what I want to show you. I don't know if you guys remember in the beginning of the video I showed you how much play this uh, tire had. Well check this out. See how there's no play? I'm pushing it back and forth. There's no play at all. It's solid as a rock. So that's what you want to go ahead and um, you know whenever you do have play your inner tie rods uh, could be the issue the reason why I knew it was in the wheel bearing is because when I moved it up and down like this if you have play it's most likely the real bear the uh, wheel bearings but it didn't have any play and now it doesn't have any play on the outer or inner tie rod all right guys that's the only thing I want to show you guys thank you